Hello folks, uh, my plan is to do several uh, tutorials on the analysis of uh, laminated composites in CATIA, uh, running it or analyzing it with its own native solvent. However, you have to realize that laminated composites are basically plies stacked on top of each other, which run in different directions, where the fibers run in different directions. And therefore, when it comes to displaying uh, stresses, you have to uh, display these stresses at different levels or at different plies or at different layers, okay? Uh, in order to do that, you have to know a little bit more about uh, about uh, how to plot uh, stresses in CATIA uh, and a few tips that you need to know. Uh, what I've, uh, obviously, our intention later on is to do, uh, uh, to analyze the, the uh, laminates with the uh, Composite laminates with the shell elements, but it's a good idea if you see some of those uh, tips first in the context of solid elements, no lamination involved, it's just the straight of solid elements. When you run it, there are a few, few tips and tricks that you need to know. And then after that, I will prepare one for the same kind of thing except for shells. So this current one is uh, think about it as tips for displaying uh, uh, stresses uh, in uh, solid elements, okay? Uh, these are not, okay, well documented in the online help. Therefore, it's helpful if I uh, actually showed that for you. Okay, so here's the problem that I'm going to do. A very simple problem. A bar, 8 inches long two by two inches uh, uh, wide and thick, which is actually loaded. The reason I'm doing this problem, because it's such a simple one, that we can always check the values of stresses, make sure that whatever we're doing is right, okay? Obviously, this is a, a uniaxial a loading pro problem. The dominant stress here is, if you if you stick to this coordinate system up here, uh, ignore these other ones, is uh, sigma y is the dominant stress, and it's going to be 100 psi, okay? Now, uh, first of all, I will come back to these other things that you see here, corners we see here in a minute. Okay, so here's the situation. Because of symmetry, we don't have to model the entire bar. All we need to do is to model one eighth of it. In other words, you cut it in the middle, cut it in the, in the longitudinal direction, horizontally and vertically. And this little piece that's left, four inch by one inch by one inch, 100 PSI applied to it, and all these created, fictitiously created surfaces are on rollers or Katia call it uh, surface fibers. Okay, now let's go back to this drawing that we had uh, initially. So we're going to analyze what you see here. Now this XYZ is a coordinate system that is aligned with my global coordinate system. Remember, when you start Katia, it starts with a global coordinate system, X, Y, Z. You can create your own. So I've created three coordinate systems here. One is the one that you see right there, which is actually aligned with the global X, Y, Z. Then I will do another one here. And this one that you see here is rotated about the Z axis. So this is rotated about the Z axis. Z axis is this vertical one by minus 30 degrees. So it goes, think about it as counterclockwise or clockwise uh, by uh, minus th by 30 degrees. And then there's another coordinate system here, which is rotating uh, about the Y axis. So remember the Y axis is right there, as you can see. So I'm gonna rotate this by 45 degrees uh, counterclockwise. Now this is not gonna be an interesting case, but I wanna show you. And then the third one that I'm gonna do later on at the end, which is rotating about the x-axis, but it's not displayed here. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and actually uh, create these things, and we're going to run it and say a few words about uh, what you see there. These actually, what you see here, down here, is the one that goes with the one right there, the middle one, and this is 45 degrees about the y-axis is associated with uh, what you see on the top right corner. Okay, so let me go quickly and make these, these things. Uh, on the uh, vertical plane, I will sketch. 
uh, in the x y uh, x x z plane, right? So something like that. So this is going to be one inch by one inch. Bring these things. Exit. And uh, pad it in the y direction by four inches. Okay. So what you see there is precisely what I have here. All right. Uh, let's uh, uh, let me create these coordinate system one by one. There is uh, three of them that I want to do. Okay. Uh, what do I mean? These three coordinate system. This is obviously the trivial one, and then the other two. Okay. So first of all, the coordinate systems are done with this uh, icon right there. You see that? You click on it. It says, where do you want your origin to be? Well, you can leave it there at the global origin. But for visual purposes, I would like to move this thing a little bit to the right and up. So I'm going to go in the uh, uh, create a point. You see? Origin. I want to create a point. And the core point is going to be maybe I'll make it uh, two inches up. Two inches up. And minus uh, three inches, I'll make it minus uh, four inches uh, in the X direction, just so that we can see it better. Actually, maybe I should make this thing one inch instead of two. Uh, yep, and maybe I make it minus three, how about that? Minus three, so that it doesn't take too much room here. And when we are done, when we are done, see Y, X, Y, Z, aligned with the global X, Y, Z, we say okay. And there we are. As a matter of fact, I'm going to call this thing, uh, I'm going to rename this thing, call it uh, Aligned with the Global XYZ. How about that? So that you can easily detect it. Aligned. Aligned. With Global XYZ. Okay. Very good. All right. Now I'm going to make another one, so another coordinate system, let me minimize this, another coordinate system, okay, uh, create a point, okay, uh, so uh, it's going to be minus, uh, same height, but minus maybe five, see how it looks like. So it's going to be right there, maybe actually I'll make it minus minus six so the original is here you say okay now I want to except that I want to rotate this thing about the this was about the uh, z-axis yeah about the z like you put the cursor there you put the cursor in this z-axis right click and you say rotation and you put a minus 30 there minus 30 degrees there and we say okay now uh, notice that this thing become became dotted and this thing is uh, you know solid that means that this is the coordinate system that's active I don't want that okay so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna uh, select this coordinate system I, oh by the way before I do that let me rename this property I'm going to call this thing uh, uh, rotated, rotated about global Z, global Z by minus 30 degrees. Okay, that's the name of it. <coughs> and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this thing. Uh, as not current, okay. That, that's okay. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what it. Does. Let's do another one now. Uh, where is this? Uh, right there. Uh, right click, create a point. Now notice that when I said not current, it means that start measuring from the 
uh, original coordinate system whose origin was right there. Okay, so let me move this thing a little bit further back. So maybe minus eight, uh, same height. See how it looks like. Maybe I'll make it minus nine, same height. Yeah, that's good. And then we say, okay. And we're gonna rotate this thing about the plan. Oh, uh, look, by the way, this is aligned. What I did here is aligned with uh, uh, the one that I created earlier. And I don't want that. So as a matter of fact, let me cancel this, okay? Let me make this thing as current. So that's current. Okay, good. Uh, so uh, coordinate system. Uh, create a point. I think I made it minus six, so I'll make it minus nine. Same height, right there. I say okay. And rotate it about the y axis. The plan was 45 degrees. 45. 45. Oops, 45. Okay. Good. So the one that I did earlier was actually aligned with this one because that was set as current, but I changed that so that it's 45 degrees with respect to the original coordinate system that's right here. Now let's give this thing a name too. Properties. Rotate it. Rotate it about global y axis. Y, uh, 45 degrees, plus 45, how about that, plus 45. Okay, this is so that we can easily uh, track these things. Good, so uh, we're pretty much uh, done. We created our coordinate systems here, so let's go ahead and uh, let, me, let me move this thing up there. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply material. We're gonna make this thing out of metal. Uh, out of steel, the part, we say okay, all right, and uh, as a matter of fact, let me make my original coordinate system uh, as default, uh, as default, uh, uh, in other words, current, so this right now, this is current, so any any forces and you know, displacement I apply is going to be referring to this X, Y, Z, so let me to make sure that I'm not making any mistake, I'm going to say it set as not current okay good so the global xyz is what's current by the way that means this is current okay all right so uh we, we are done here so we're going to go to uh, analysis and simulation now we go into the fi finite element uh, uh, module it's a very simple problem so this mesh is going to be fine i'm going to keep it like that Default is going to be like that. So, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to hide these planes. All right. If you want, you can see the mesh. You put the cursor here, right click mesh visualization. And there we are. We don't want to, we don't want to see that. So I'm going to deactivate this. Okay, good. Now uh, this face is subject to 100 psi so uh, p pressure is right there on that minus 100 because i want to put it under the tensile loading condition right there if i put 100 it compresses it that's a standard uh, standard convention in package fea packages and then i have surface slider on the surfaces that are artificially created so surface slider remember this back this side and the bottom side okay very good so uh, you're gonna run it where's the run right there Don't worry about the warning message.
and it's finished. Good. Nothing magic here. If I look at the deformation, this is just going to stretch. And uh, without any, you know, basically distortions, you're just going to stretch. As a matter of fact, you can put this, put the cursor there, right click, hide and show. There is your original thing and you can animate it. You can see what happens. This basically gets stretched. Fine. Okay, so uh, close. Uh, let me hide this guy. So you put the cursor here, right click, hide and show. Okay, very good. Now let's plot the stress. One meter stress. So one meter stress, you clicked on it. And let me also change the rendering here to material shading. Now, first of all, <laughs> this looks weird. That's because the stress is constant. You can see that the stress is constant. All these numbers, all these colors are 100 PSI. And that doesn't surprise us. That's why, because this is all constant, it becomes a numerical, uh, you know, round off of the, uh, to within the computer accuracy. accuracy, And uh, that's why it looks like that. Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, very good. Now, uh, if, if I put the cursor on the part that is, is hiding here, right click, hide and show, I can see my corner system here. Too. Okay, now, I am going to, uh, I am going to, uh, deactivate this plot. As a matter of fact, before I deactivate it, let me show you something here. You double click on double click on this contour, either from the tree or from the, the screen, and you say more. Notice that it says access system is global. Okay? Global access system. You cannot display it with respect to other access system with the uh, the uh, what is this thing the uh, one meter selected from right here okay you cannot do that this display local all that means is that also show me where how the global system is uh, acting on each part that this is not a mystery here because you can see if I zoom in each element has a coordinate system of its own. Uh, one in this direction, which happens to be X, two in the Y direction, and three in the Z direction. There's nothing magic about this because uh, you, you have no choice. This is all displayed with respect to the global coordinate system. Okay, fine. Now, and I'm going to close this. Now, if you put the cursor, if you put the cursor on... Uh, static solution right there static solution and you say right click you go to image generate image see that generate image so here's what happened to get the one visa stress you can get it from here or principal if you want you can get it from here that's no problem but if i want to do some fancy stuff the tips about uh, these problem put the cursor there right click generate image generate image okay it says what do you want to generate uh, with the you know which is not in standard icon well I want to do stresses stresses right there see that and what do I want to do I want to plot individual components of stress at the node see that it says full stress tensor component uh, very frequently people say, oh, how can I look at what sigma x is, or sigma y is, or tau xy is, etc. Well, this is how you do it. You want to stress full tensor component, and you say, okay. All right, right there. Okay. So, if you double click, if you double click, this is the, the graph that we just generated, the plot that we just generated, the contour that we just generated, and you say more, Okay, look here. We move this thing away. As a matter of fact, let me also show my corner system later on. Okay, fine. Notice that here you have access to individual components, individual components of stress. This is sigma xx, sigma yy, sigma zz, tau, tau, uh, what is that, uh, yz, tau xz, and tau xy okay and 
you can also select your coordinates system. Well, the default, I mean, the default that was that taken here was global. Fine, I understand. For example, if I plot, if I plot C, C11, that means sigma xx. And notice that this is zero. There's no stress. The only stress that you have is in the y. In other words, C22. Everything else must be zero. So sigma C11, which is sigma xx, zero. Look at these numbers. They're all zero. Okay. If you go to C22, you should get 100. And you do. And all these other ones are going to be zero because this, the only thing that prevails here is uh, axial stress. All six components of stress, except for sigma yy, which is C22, is zero. Okay, now, if I say, okay, I want to choose a different coordinate system. For example, let me put this thing back to C11. For example, you click on this little... Uh, box with three dots on it, it says, okay, how do you want to define, you, 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 can, you can select your coordinate system either by taking the global, which I already had, or user. Remember, I have three user-defined coordinate system here. This happens to be aligned with the global one, but these two are not. So if I say user, I can go pick. Or if I say manual, I can do it on the fly. So let's do user. And I'm going to select this guy. Not surprisingly, this is going to be exactly the same numbers that we had before. You say, okay, nothing changed. See that? Nothing changed here. All six components of stress are going to be exactly like before because that corner system that I pick happened to be aligned with the global one. Fine. Let's go, let's go to another one. Let me show them here. Let's go and select this one. This is the one that is rotated about the Z axis by uh, uh, minus 30 degrees, okay? And we say, okay. All right, look at C11. It says 25, 25. Look at C22, it says 75. C33, zero. C, C23, which is tau XZ, zero. That's tau YZ, I'm sorry. C13, which is tau XZ, zero. And last one is C12, which is really tau XY, which is not zero, minus 43. Now, how can I check these things? What exactly, what exactly is happening here? Well, if you go back to my transparency here, this is the one that I'm currently doing. I rotated the corner system by uh, 30 degrees, minus 30 degrees. And this is where you can find the new components of the, uh, the stress when you rotate the XY corner system about Z using either more circle, if you want, you can do more circle, or using the stress transformation formula that you see in standard uh, stress analysis book. And look, 25. 75. If I use more circle or the, this stress, uh, this uh, straightforward uh, uh, transformation, multiply the the stresses over here, two dimensional stresses by t, which is over there, uh, you're going to get 25, 75 minus 43. So the global coordinate system, in the global coordinate system, the stresses are like that. The only thing that's there is 100 in the y. But in the, this coordinate system, the, the, the newly defined coordinate system, we get 25, 75, and minus 4, 3. Everything else is 0. Okay, now let's do the other one. Let's do the other one. So another coordinate system. This time I'm going to choose this, the end one right there. The one that is rotated about the y-axis by... Uh, uh, 40 uh, by 45 degrees. <laughs> and it's not surprising that this is going to be exactly like the global two. C11, which is sigma xx, zero. Everything is zero. C22 is going to be 100. Everything else is going to be zero. Everything else is going to be zero, including this last one. Now, why this is happening, go to this diagram. 
This is rotation about the y-axis, and it says you can also use more circle to get these. This is a trivial more circle, it should be circle. Uh, a dot is a circle, and therefore nothing changes. Okay, so notice that in this coordinate system, in this coordinate system, which is the red one, uh, sorry, the the black one, sigma x x, sigma z z, tau x z, they're all zero. So if you use them all circle, it's going to be a single dot. Uh, at, at, at the origin, and uh, this uh, transformation t, if you put there 45 degrees, uh, you're going to multiply it with sigma, you get zero. So basically, this is why in the global coordinate system and in the rotated coordinate system, about y, you get identical stresses. Now, this last one, uh, this last one, I'm going to do it on the fly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, uh, click on it. Go and make it manual. So notice that the, what it's saying is that give me the direction of the x, y, z, x prime, y prime, z prime yourself. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change this thing to zero and make this thing a one and make this thing zero and make this thing the one. So basically, I'm swapping. Uh, when I when I rotate, I'm rotating by. Uh, 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 well, let's, let's see. Uh, I'm changing the role of x and y. Okay, so this is rotating about the z-axis. Remember the first one that I did with 30 degrees minus 30 degrees. I'm doing with 90 degrees. So we say okay. So it's not surprising that if you go back to here, it says C11, which is sigma xx is 100, because I swapped manually, I swapped the role of x and y. So C11 is 100. Everything else is zero. Everything else is zero. All of them. OK? Later on, when we do laminated composites, uh, these things are going to be not dimmed anymore. See layer, lamina, and things like that. And uh, uh, we have to, we have to, but we have to lo learn these basic things about solids first. This is not involving composites at all. Solids first, and then shells in the next video segment, which is essentially the same problem, except that I'm going to be doing it with shell element. And once that's done, uh, we will be moving in the direction of making video segments for uh, 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 laminar composites with the Catillo's uh, native FEA solvent. Okay? Good luck.